So this is just some practice with determining what intermolecular forces are present. So um, knowledge of Lewis structures is helpful for this because you have to determine whether it's nonpolar or polar. So for C6H6, um, that's nonpolar just because uh, these aren't electronegative, so they're going to be nonpolar. And so if it's nonpolar, the only force that it can be is dispersion forces. So it's just going to be dispersion forces. Now over here, um, and the structure will also show that it's uh, nonpolar. So for CH3Cl, uh, the structure shows that it's polar, and you can tell it's polar because of the Cl. Cl is electronegative, so it's going to pull these electrons more to it, causing it to be polar. So if it's polar, that means it's dipole-dipole, and all compounds have dispersion forces. So all these are going to have dispersion forces, but this one's also going to have dipole-dipole. Then you can also look to make sure it, um, uh, to see if it has hydrogen bonding, and it doesn't because the only hydrogen bonding that occurs is between fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. So this is just going to be dipole-dipole and dispersion forces. Now over here, PF3. Uh, this is where the Lewis structure comes in, but... Um, this it's going to be nonpolar because this is a tetrahedral structure, and it has one lone pair because of phosphorus, and that's going to have a polar structure. So this polar structure is going to have, well, it's, like I said, all these are going to have dispersion forces, but it's also going to have dipole-dipole. Um, we can look for hydrogen bonding, but there's no hydrogen bonding. Even though there's fluorine, there's no hydrogen, so there's no hydrogen bonding. So it's just going to be dipole-dipole and dispersion. Now, NaCl, NaCl is going to be um, a little different uh, because, it, it once again, it has dispersion forces, but since this is a metal and a um, non-metal, this is actually going to have ionic forces. So, it's going to have ionic forces and dispersion forces. Now, ionic forces can be ion dipoles, meaning if this ion um, uh Get, see, the ion has a positive charge, and if you have a molecule such as water, uh, which is, which is uh, polar, this ion, the positive charge, can be electrod attracted to the negative charge of the water, um, therefore creating an um, intermolecular force, and that would be called an ion dipole force. Or if it um, gets attracted to a uh, nonpolar molecule, it, it's, it is ion-induced dipole. So moving on to CS2. Um, once again, the loose structure comes in handy because uh, if you draw it out, it will be nonpolar. And um, also you can see that it's nonpolar because it doesn't have electro... Uh, well, yeah, the loose structure is the most important thing to see that if whether or not if, it, um, if it's polar or nonpolar. So since this is going to be nonpolar... Um, because of the loose structure, what happens is that it's just going to have dispersion forces. Because dipole-dipole only happens when there's electronegative force. So this is just going to be dispersion force. Now another thing to remember is, for example, if it's um, CCl4, right? If there's CCl4, even though this is electronegative, the um, it's not dipole dipole because it's actually tetrahedral and it becomes nonpolar. So even if each individual bond is polar, if they all combine and make a nonpolar structure, then it would only be dispersion forces. So this would actually just be dispersion um, because the tetrahedral structure makes it so that it's nonpolar.